Hey everyone, happy Friday. So it's a big day yesterday really, but today for those of us that work in marketing and on Facebook, a lot of people are calling it the Facebook apocalypse, which I think is a little bit dramatic, especially as a marketer. Um, I, I'll address that in a second. But so Facebook came out with a huge announcement yesterday about their algorithm. And to be honest with you, this is the biggest change that I have ever seen from Facebook when it comes to their algorithm. And there are people running through the streets screaming, the sky is falling, the Facebook sky is falling. And that's not true. I'm not freaking out about this. You shouldn't freak out about it either. Let's all take a, date, a deep breath. It's gonna be okay. So today during this live, I am gonna talk about exactly what Facebook announced. I'm gonna break it down for you. I'm gonna give you a marketer's translation as to what it means. And then I'm gonna talk about, I think I have five or six things that you should integrate into your marketing strategy today to make sure that your business is not negatively impacted by what's changing on Facebook. So. As I go through this, please feel free to go ahead and ask questions in the comments. If you have colleagues or coworkers or team members that you think would benefit from this, please go ahead and hit share. Um, I'm gonna try to stick live on here for a little bit to make sure I answer all of your questions. So, all right, I have extensive notes, so please forgive me, but I do want to make sure that I address everything today in a clear manner, so I am gonna be reading off my notes because I want to be very clear about this. So I'm gonna break down the announcement, and both Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, and Adam Masiri, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name correctly, but he's the head of the Facebook newsfeed over at Facebook, released announcements. And I did link to the official announcement from Facebook in the description of this live. I have also linked to a blog post that I wrote about this. So everything that I talk about today is included in that blog post. So you can go back and review it and kind of consume it in whatever way that you need to. So what is the update? So I'm gonna read what Facebook said. They they said, today we use signals like how many people react to, comment on, or share posts to determine how high they appear in the newsfeed. With this update, we will also prioritize posts that spark conversations and meaningful interactions between people. To do this, we will predict which posts you might want to interact with your friends about and show these posts higher in the newsfeed. These posts that inspire back and forth discussion in the comments and posts that you might want to share and react to, whether that's a post from a friend seeking advice, a friend asking a recommendation for a trip or a news article video prompting lots of discussion. We will also prioritize posts from family and friends over public content consistent with our news feed values. So right there they say it. They're going to favor content from people and in between people and not in between people and pages. This is a big impact and I'm gonna break that down for what that means. So the translation with this update is basically you're going to see more stuff from your family and friends. And you're not just gonna see more things from your family and friends, but you're going to see posts that are more engaging and more comments and more meaningful between your family and friends. Those are going to rank higher in the newsfeed. And later on, and I'll cover it, but Facebook does specifically say, we are going to see less branded content, meaning content from business pages in our news feeds. So, I'm just losing my place, let me make sure. So this statement is reflecting what Mark Zuckerberg said earlier this year about fixing Facebook. Basically, they have said they want people to have more meaningful experiences on Facebook. So they said that when people just scroll through the newsfeed and they're not really interacting with things, it actually makes people feel bad. 
It makes them feel bad about themselves. It makes themselves feel bad about the state of the world. And Mark Zuckerberg wants to fix that. He wants people to feel better about their experiences on Facebook. And what they believe will do that is by creating more community and more meaningful interactions. Mark Zuckerberg actually admitted that this might mean people spend less time on Facebook. But the time that they do spend on Facebook is going to be more meaningful. Okay, so what does this mean for pages? What does this mean for businesses? So this again is from Facebook. Because space in the newsfeed is limited, showing more posts from friends and family and updates that spark conversation means we'll show less public content, including videos and other posts from publishers or businesses. As we make these updates, pages may see their reach video watch time and referral traffic decrease. The impact will vary from page to page, driven by factors including the type of content they produce and how people interact with it. Pages making posts that people generally don't react to or comment on will see the biggest decreases in distribution. Pages whose posts prompt conversations between friends will see less of an effect. So what does that mean? So here they specifically call out the space in the newsfeed. Now this is something that we as marketers have known is happening. We know that the more people that, they're on, that are on Facebook, the more businesses that there are on Facebook, the more people that use Facebook ads and are creating content, the less space there is in the newsfeed. Facebook can only serve so much content in their newsfeed. Dana, I see your question about groups and I'm gonna address that a little bit later, but I am gonna address it and I see it. Um, so the less space that they have, Facebook really needs to prioritize what kind of content that a user can realistically consume and have a good experience. And so that's why they address the newsfeed issue and we've known that's been coming for a long time as Facebook grew. So I'm just finding my place here. So the more that um, they make this change to the algorithm, in the past they have see, said that some pages will see a decrease. And this time they are essentially saying that all pages, Kim, it's okay, don't worry. It's okay, you're gonna be okay. Um, I don't want you guys to worry, it really is okay. I am not freaking out about this and a lot of my business is on Facebook and I'm not freaking out, okay? So in this announcement, they specifically say that most pages are going to see a decrease in their reach. Um, it's gonna vary from page to page, like they said, driven by factors of what kind of content you are producing and how people interact with it. And the statements here are not a surprise to me. As somebody who has worked on Facebook, I have taught Facebook for 10 years, this doesn't worry me and it's not a big change to me. And as a marketer, we know that people want quality content, they want content that engages them and that's relevant to them. So, you know, that's always been the case in marketing and that in this algorithm change is not changing anything. You still need to produce high quality content that is relevant to your audience and you're going to be fine, okay? Now, I'm gonna read what they said about, and, and Karen, I don't think you should get rid of your page. I don't think this announcement is a reason to get rid of your page. I do believe it is a reason to evaluate what your marketing looks like as a whole. Marketing is a huge ecosystem. There are a ton of moving parts and everything works together. And so you shouldn't have all of your eggs in the Facebook basket, um, but it doesn't mean you should abandon it. It is a part of a bigger picture and I'm gonna talk about that. Okay, so I'm gonna continue with Facebook's announcement. So can people still see posts from pages they follow at the top of the newsfeed? And this is from Facebook. Yes, people who want to see more posts from pages they follow can choose see first in newsfeed uh, preferences to make sure they always see posts from their favorite pages. So 
This is something I've talked about before, but it's never really been the forefront of any Facebook strategy that I've talked about, but now it should be. You need to train your followers to not only just like your page, but you need to train them that if they like your content, they want to see their content, they need to opt into it by going to your Facebook business page, clicking on the following button, it's right underneath your cover image, there's a drop down menu and it says, and I'm gonna tell you the options here, see first, default, or hide. So you need to train your people to go and say that they want to see your content first. So I'm gonna tell you guys right now, if you guys like that I keep you up to date on these things, go to our Facebook business page, click on the following and select see first. And that is just a new tactic that we need to use when we are working with people who want to see our information. Because I do hear from people time to time that they like a page and then they never see anything again and they want to see it. So it's just an extra step that we're going to have to take. So we're gonna have to like a page or follow the page and then we're gonna have to decide how we want to curate our own news feeds. And you can do that by going to that following option. It's underneath the cover image on every single business page and choose see first. Okay, so next, what type of page posts will show higher in the newsfeed? And again, this is directly from Facebook. Page posts that generate conversations between people will show higher in the newsfeed. For example, Live videos often lead to discussion among viewers on Facebook. In fact, live videos on average get six times as many interactions as regular videos. Many creators who post videos on Facebook prompt discussion among their followers, as do posts from celebrities. Jen, I'm not sure if there's a cap on that number of people that you can see first. Um, so to continue. In groups, people often interact around public content. Local businesses connect with their communities by posting relevant updates and creating events. And news can help start conversations on important issues. And again, they emphasize using engagement bait to get people into commenting on posts is not meaningful interaction and will continue to be demoted in the newsfeed. So there are a couple things I want you to pay attention in this part of the announcement because Facebook is telling us what is going to work. They're telling us the content that we need to be creating in order to be showing. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't know if there was a cap, so. And Mari, she's the best, so yes, absolutely. So Karen is saying there's 25 pages that you can see first. Probably has to do with your volume of content that Facebook can serve to you. It, always, it also probably depends on how much content that you can view on Facebook. So if you're somebody who only checks it once a day or if you're somebody who's on it all day, every day, you're gonna be able to consume more content. But thank you, Karen, for sharing that number. Okay. So like I said, there are a couple things to pay attention to in this. So the translation is you must create quality, relevant content that helps create conversations and community between you and your followers, period. And this is something as marketers we know, this is not new and this is why I'm not freaking out about it, is because as a career marketer, someone who has been doing this for 15 years, I've worked in advertising agencies, we know this. You have to create quality and relevant content that people want to interact with. You have to create that relationship with your customers and clients. That aspect of marketing is never ever gonna change. The channels like Facebook and Instagram and all of these social networks, they're gonna change, it's going to be fluid. But if you can grasp the tried and true strategies that we as marketers like me, who've been doing it forever, know you're going to be fine, okay? So the other part of this I want you to pay attention is they actually call out live video, groups, events, and news. 
that's our hint right there. Well, it's not a hint, it's a direct thing from Facebook. So you need to be doing live video. And when you're doing live video, you need to encourage people to interact, ask questions, encourage them to ask questions, encourage everyone to interact together. That's going to help you. And doing it consistently is going to help you. I do free training on our Facebook page every Thursday at noon Mountain Standard Time. So our followers have been trained, they've become accustomed to knowing that that's when I show up on Facebook and that's where people can interact with me. So by training your followers on where you go live, interacting with you, you're gonna be all right, okay? So they also called out groups. Now several of you are asking in the comments, what about groups? What does this mean for groups? And this is great for groups and Facebook has been showing signals and said that they want to build robust group communities. And this announcement today is reinforcing that. So I think that if you have a group for your business, you should have a group for your business, that this is a way for you to continue those conversations with your customers and to stay in front of your customers because your group is a place to cultivate relationships and to have conversations. And so having a group for your business is going to be very helpful with the new way that Facebook is going. I already see groups dominate my newsfeed, so you should have a group strategy. I have several blog posts about um, Facebook groups that can help you out. So I will post those after I am done here that you can go check out. So they also call out events and news. So a lot of people create conversations about news topics. So um, like this, this is news. This is a news topic. I actually normally don't go live on a Friday, but I knew that you guys were wondering what the heck is happening. And I'm, I'm seeing people running around, you know, freaking out about this. And I wanted to quell that. Um, but this live will likely get a little more coverage because I'm addressing a news issue, something that is popular, something that people are wondering about and want to learn more about. So your Facebook live, your groups, events, and news, start thinking about how you can use those to have quality conversations with your customers. Okay, so now that I have reviewed Facebook's big announcement, I'm gonna talk about some actual strategies that you can implement to make sure that you get minimal impact from this announcement, okay? And if you guys have questions, I'm happy to answer them. So go ahead and put them in the comments. If I can't get to it, I'll scroll back through um, and make sure that I answer your questions, okay? The number one thing, and if you guys have watched any of my trainings or you have listened to me for any period of time, this is not gonna to be too new to you, but you must create quality content. Thank you, Renee. Um, you have to create quality content, period. It has to be content that your ideal client wants to see. As I mentioned above, there's already limited space in the newsfeed and that's going to become more and more limited um, as more people use Facebook and as more people learn how to use Facebook and pay to play. So you've got to create the best of the best when it comes to your content. Um, so do not post for the sake of posting. You need to have thought, time, and care put into the content that you're creating. And this, this aspect of the algorithm that, you know, it's always been based on engagement and likes and comments and shares. And now they're putting more emphasis on that meaningful conversations. And so, you know, Facebook's going to look at those indicators the same way that they have in the past, the things I just said, those likes, comments, shares, and conversations, and that is how they're going to judge if your content is meaningful to your audience. And so your content should encourage that. It should encourage those likes, shares, and meaningful comments. And if you're creating conversations between you and your audience, it's gonna work and it's gonna be okay. Um, on the flip side of that, if you are creating content that is not quality, it is not things that your audience want to see, it is spammy or salesy or self-serving, then you are going to get demoted and 
you are your content is going to be served less and less in the newsfeed and that's not new that's something that has always been happening um, but now it's going to be even more competitive and if it's going to be more competitive you cannot do that which leads me to my second point is post less we all know it is hard to create content consistently and Andrea I see that you you're asking if it's hard to go live on a consistent basis you know maybe it's just pick one day a month and that's okay if that's what you can handle or maybe every other month or every other um, Thursday or something like that um, or promoting it but so posting less and like I said it is much easier to create quality content if you don't have to create 10 posts a week or five posts a week or whatever it is I think that if you stick to three to five times a week or maybe even less um, if you're creating some really wonderful content I think you're gonna be okay because it's going to be that quality content so spend more time on creating quality content versus feeling like you have to post every day and you don't know what to post and then you end up posting things that are like meh to your audience okay so let's focus on quality over content let's not feel pressure to post every day um, let's let's work out a schedule that works for you to create that content that your audience wants okay all right number three is Facebook live so you guys have heard me talk about Facebook live before um, I'm gonna have to scroll back through these questions guys because they're coming in quick and I'm missing it so if I miss it you can ask again at the end okay okay so Facebook live Facebook specifically calls out Facebook live in this announcement they said that Facebook live gets six times the interaction than other types of video on Facebook and so what does that mean I so I will tell you I in my marketing plan this year for my business I have been talking about creating some produced video and I was gonna post it on Facebook I'm telling you right now I'm rethinking that because Facebook specifically says that the they want Facebook live and so what I will probably do is I'm going to shift my strategy again I talked about there is a large marketing um, ecosystem out there Facebook is not our only channel you guys we have a ton of options out there and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on posting those produced pieces on YouTube YouTube is the second largest search engine online they're owned by Google which is the first one <laughs> so I'm gonna start looking at other places that I can still do the things that I want to do and not rely on Facebook and so I'm gonna stick to doing my live videos on Facebook I'm gonna do my lives every Thursday like I do at noon and you know what maybe I'll add in a second one maybe I'll go live twice a week now if that's something that I have the capacity to do so I can make sure I'm creating quality content I'm not just going live for the sake of going live that it will be quality content okay so think about that um, make sure you ask questions during your Facebook lives I asked a question the other day in one of my Facebook lives I asked people if they prefer coffee and tea or tea and you should have seen <laughs> the amount of comments that came in from that people love to share their opinions they love to interact so give people the option to interact with you while you are live and encourage them to interact and, to, and ask them questions and and make sure they're genuine and authentic things I wanted to know because in my private group I uh, marketing for mompreneurs I ask people before they join how they like their coffee and as a coffee drinker myself I was really shocked at how many people said they don't drink coffee and I was like oh I don't know how people survive without coffee because I can't but okay cool and that's why I asked it is I actually wanted to know um, so make sure you're interacting with people and you guys I'm seeing your questions um, and I'm getting a, a little overwhelmed with them so I'm gonna take them at the end I'm gonna scroll back through and I will give you the opportunity to ask at the end I promise okay so the next thing I want you to do is concentrate on groups and I said this so again Facebook calls this out specifically 
in their announcement. And we all know people tend to interact more in groups. There's more conversations going on um, inside a group than they do on pages. And so Facebook, like I said, has been giving indicators for a really long time that they are an invest, they are investing in groups. And this is not changing, especially since they reiterate it in their announcement. You know, they have really um, changed things in groups since back in the day when I started 10 years ago teaching Facebook that you know, we have insights in groups now. We have the ability to schedule posts inside of groups now. We can create events inside of groups. There are lots of lovely bells and whistles inside of our Facebook group. So I really think, you know, concentrate on working in your group and cultivating relationships inside your group and that engagement, and that will help your business. So that is a good supplement to your marketing is having a great Facebook group. And like I said, I have a lot of resources on our blog about growing your group, what to post in your group, how to make sure you're getting engaging engagement in your group. After this announcement today, I will po probably concentrate on teaching groups a little bit more than I do now. So I will share those links after I'm done here. All right, so the next tactic that I want you to use is train your audience through episodic content. And this is what I alluded to by training your followers to know that you show up consistently on this day and on this time. And the person who, sorry, I can't remember who asked earlier, but if you said that you aren't necessarily able to be consistent, you know, scale it back to where you can be consistent. Um, you really want them to know that this is when you show up on Facebook every week, whether that's an in-depth post about something or a video, a Facebook Live, whatever it is, be consistent, remind your followers that you do it. So for instance, I like I mentioned, I do free training every Thursday, but I create an event for that live where people can RSVP because then people will be reminded when I'm going live. So, you know, make sure that you remind them. I send out emails. I do posts about it on other networks. So on Instagram, um, I, you know, talk about it in other places. Marketing's a big ecosystem, guys, like I said. So you need to really make sure that you are taking advantage of all the other outlets that are available to you. So train your audience to know when to expect things from you, okay? All right, so the next thing, and I saw a couple questions pop in here. Renee, I see your question about Facebook ads. Um, you guys, you gotta pay to play. That's just how it's gonna be. Um, the great thing is, is right now, I heard a stat somewhere, and I don't know if it's true, so don't take my word for it, but I did hear a stat that like only something that like 4% of businesses actually use Facebook ads. And if that's true, I don't know if it is, I'm gonna search later and verify, but if that is true, that's insane to me because Facebook ads are so <laughs> powerful, you guys. I love Facebook ads. And the best thing about Facebook ads is you don't have to have a million dollar budget. You can spend $5 a day for two weeks and see an impact, okay? So you are a business. We all have to spend money to make money. We know that as business owners. And so you need to make sure that you do have a paid aspect of your marketing plan on Facebook, and that includes purchasing ads. Now, like I said earlier, the newsfeed is very busy and it's only gonna get busier. And especially, I believe that more and more people are going to start shifting budgets to using Facebook ads to make sure that their content is going to be seen. So I see two things happening. I see it's going to become more competitive, more competitive um, on using Facebook ads because more people are gonna start using them and it's going to become more expensive. And so learn how to use Facebook ads now and really get them honed in before that starts happening because I do see that that's gonna happen with this announcement. More people are gonna understand, hey, it's pay to play. Now, the second thing I want you to know about pay to play is that you need to make sure that your ads are quality and only boost and put money behind your, um, your best content. And so when you're creating this wonderful content and it's your quality content and you see that it resonates with your audience, give it an extra boost 
and put some money behind it. Now, just as a side note here, I don't use the boost button. That's like the junk food of Facebook ads. And so, um, don't do that. When I say boost, I just mean put money behind it. You can create an ad out of existing posts. So that's what you need to do. So, um, Facebook ads have got to be a part of it. Learn how to do it and only put money behind your best content, especially as it becomes more competitive. Okay. Now the last thing here, and then I'm going to take questions. So if you guys have questions, stick around. I'm going to do a Q and a here, um, to help you guys out. So the last thing I want to talk about, and I alluded to it earlier is you need to have an integrated marketing strategy. So, it may come as a surprise for you, but I am not just a Facebook marketer. I have worked in marketing for 15 years and I work in a lot of different areas, not just Facebook. So I do email marketing and blogging and websites and, and social media and all sorts of stuff online, okay? So you need to have an integrated marketing strategy. You need to take advantage of all of the channels that are available to you and you know, you need to know where your audience spends their time, where they get their information. Nobody only gets their information from Facebook. I'm sure your audience is elsewhere on the web and offline. So you need to understand what your other options are. So are they on Pinterest? Do they read blogs? Do they read magazines? Well, some people do still, right? <laughs> you really need to understand who your audience is and where they're getting their information and make sure that you, you know, I don't, I don't like telling people to have a presence everywhere because then you can get spread too thin and you don't want to get spread too thin, but you should be in the key places where your audience plays and gets information. Something that we've said in the marketing world forever and ever with social media is these platforms are rented land, meaning you do not own. <laughs> anything on your Facebook page or your Instagram account or even your Pinterest account, you guys, you do not own that. Facebook owns it. And we know Facebook can pull the rug out from under us. Like people say they are today, but it, they're really not. But that can go away any day. So what you need to do is you need to build in places where you own the information. Okay. So you need to be building your email list, your contacts, if you have a texting program, that's another great way to get directly to your audience. Own your customer's information because here's something, the next social media network that comes out, what do we all need to sign up for a new account? An email address. We have to have an email address. And so you can take your email addresses of all of your contacts to that new social media platform that comes out when everyone throws their hands up and gives up on Facebook and find your audience there, okay? So don't put all your eggs in just the Facebook basket. Um, I'm seeing questions. Okay, if you guys have questions, put them in the comments. There's a little bit of a delay here, um, so okay. Cheryl's asking, so would it help to do a survey of Facebook friends to ask what is your favorite social media app? Yeah, you could absolutely do a survey, find out where people are, find out where they consume information. Um, you know, something that, that I really like to do and something that we're integrating into our marketing plan is partnering with other people who have a similar audience to me. And so we have our ideal client and we could do marketing consulting and we have marketing courses but there are a lot of other topics that my ideal client wants to know about. They want to learn about productivity. They want to learn about how to take better photos. They want to learn about how to balance their books, books, bookkeeping. I don't teach any of that, but there are other business owners out there who sell to the same people that I sell to who teach those things. And so I'm going to partner with them have them on our Facebook Live, send out an email to my list so then they get coverage and they can you know, connect with my audience. They're not competing with me. And then I can do the same with Are there partnerships that you can create in order to you know, reach your clients in a different place, in a different way? You know, um, 
like I said, they, they, they're consuming content in different places. Okay, so I'm seeing another question. So should we have a group if we sell products? I've been told I shouldn't, but now because of the algorithm, should I? Absolutely. So just because you sell a product doesn't mean you can't have a Facebook group. So Andrea, tell me what your product is. Um, and because there's a delay, I'm gonna just start talking. But let's say you sell, let's think of a product. Somebody help me product. I like, I'm blanking right now. Let's say you sell, um, makeup or actually let's say you, you sell, um, like cookware. So you sell products, you sell cookware. Oh, May okay. Megan oil. Thank you. Okay. Oil and Andrea, you make handmade ceramics. Okay. So, okay. Since Andrea asked the question, you make handmade ceramics. Um, so let's talk about your ideal client. What are your ideal clients? passions and I'm just going to assume here. So you make um, ceramic things. So maybe um, decorating, they like decorating, they're into decorating. So you can talk about interior decorating, um, tips about how to decorate your home, you know, all sorts of things that go around your customer's passion. So it doesn't necessarily have to do with your product, but it has to do with something that your audience is passionate about. So for me, we have a private group, Marketing for Mompreneurs. So if you haven't joined, we'd love to have you. And I don't talk about our courses and our consulting in there that often. I facilitate conversations around the things that my audience wants to know. And it doesn't necessarily always have to do with marketing either. You know, I was just interviewed by a publication asking about bridal shop owners, um, opening a group and what a great group to have a Facebook group online because brides want to talk about everything wedding planning, right? Like they want to know who has the best flowers and the best photographer and how to deal with their mother-in-law who wants to wear white to the wedding. <laughs> you know, there's so many conversations that you can have. And yes, these bridal shop owners sell dresses and veils and, and you know, bridesmaids dresses, but they can facilitate a conversation um, around that topic. And Kristen's asking, what, um, what's the difference? Did you already talk about a page versus a group? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, the page versus a group, if it's the difference. Um, we do have a great blog post that's about it, but I essentially tell people that your Facebook page is kind of like if you had a brick and mortar store, okay? It's your presence on Facebook. It is where people can go to find out what is your brand all about? What are you all about? What's your address? What's your phone number? Look at some pictures. It's kind of that top of funnel content, getting to know you and your product and what you sell and if they like you and if they wanna do business with you. Your Facebook group is a place to have conversations and with this Facebook algorithm update is more important than ever to facilitate those conversations. So Kristen say I have a page, but I'm considering making a group instead. I would not say do it instead. Keep your business page, okay? It's like your presence on Facebook. You need to have that Facebook page. I am not encouraging anyone to shut down their Facebook page unless you are just completely not going to do anything on it, then it's probably not worthwhile. You can leave it up and maybe say you don't post or something like that. I do not think people should be getting rid of your pages. You should have a page and a group. Okay, so you should have both. Okay, if you guys have any other questions, and if you are watching this on the replay and you have questions, I always, always, always come back and answer questions, okay? So if you're watching this on the replay, go ahead and ask your questions and I will feel free to pop in and I will answer your question later on. You're welcome, Kristen. Okay, so if there's not any more questions or I know there's a little bit of a delay, Everyone take a deep breath, it's gonna be okay. There are a lot of other options. The Facebook sky is not following. Um, you know, you're gonna be okay. You know, look at the blog post that I um, talked about with everything that you can do to make sure you're not impacted by this. It's going to be okay, okay, you guys? Okay, I'm seeing a couple more questions. Cheryl's asking, how often do you recommend to post on your page and in your group? You know what? 
I would post less now. You know, back in the day, I used to recommend like three times a day and that's insane now. And now I do like once a day every um, three or four days or I do like four or five days, I might pull back on that. So maybe try three days a week, once a day and see if that works. Is it better to do on your Facebook page or your group or both now? I would still have both, you guys. I think facilitating those conversations in your groups is gonna be really important, but I would still do both. I really would. I wouldn't give up both. I'm missing some other questions. Let me see. Where do Facebook ads play page or group? So you can only, well, that's another reason to keep your page. Thanks for the reminder, Susan. You can only run ads from a Facebook page. So if you only have a group, you can't run Facebook ads. So you gotta have that page to run ads. Let's see, what else? How often? Do you have a blog about linking a group to a page? You know what, Renee, I did a video tutorial about that a while ago. It's somewhere on our Facebook page. So I will um, go see if I can round that up and post it in the comments. Or if you go to the videos on our page, you can probably find it there. So if you guys found this helpful, I think that's all the questions now. Up, oh, Melissa, LuLaRoe, I have a page and a group. I got put in Facebook jail for going live. How can I avoid this? I don't you got put in jail for a live because I don't think you would go in jail just for a live. Facebook usually puts people in jail for doing like repetitive things. So did you go live one place and then another and got put in jail maybe? But I have a blog post about Facebook Live. So if you go to our blog, um, there's a post about that, about how to avoid it in the future. How can we keep our groups feeling social? Um, so you want to... Um, make sure that you're thinking about engaging posts. What are the conversations that your audience is passionate about? What are the things that they want to talk about in your group? So like I said with the wedding um, bridal shop owner example, you know, the brides want to talk about everything bridal related. And think about things that maybe your members can help other members with. So I know I ask questions like if you have a client who didn't pay, how, do, how did other people handle that? And so that they can learn from other group members. Um, and like I said, I will link to a couple blog posts that we have about how to boost engagement in your group and the things to do there. Okay, do you have a recommendation? Oh, Lily, your, your question is cut off. <laughs> I can't see the rest of it. If you wanna repost it. Okay. So I think that's all the questions. If you guys found this helpful, it helps me, obviously, if you share this, if you like it, if you find things like this, ugh, if you find things like this helpful, I would love it if you would go to our page, click on the following area arrow and say, see first. And that way you can make sure that you always see our updates first. Like I said, I do training every Thursday at noon right here, totally free. Um, I have some really, really fun topics coming up. Next week we are talking about how to take better photos for social media and I'm actually having a photographer, her name is Taylor. Um, she is gonna be here with me and we're gonna talk about how to create better photos for your social media and you guys, this is important more than ever because <laughs> Quality, 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 right? So we all need to know how to take better photos. And so make sure you can RSVP for that on our events. Um, and like I said, make sure that you have it marked to see our stuff first so you get access to all of our free training. If you're watching this on the replay, I will come back and answer your questions. If I did not get to it or I missed it here in the comments, which happens, I will come back and I will answer you. So thank you, you guys, so much. The Facebook sky is not following, falling, okay? It's gonna be okay. Don't give up on Facebook, but make sure you're exploring your other options online to market your business as well. Have a wonderful weekend, you guys, and thank you so much for coming and taking the time to listen to me here today.